It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity and day four in Poway with your succulent tip of the day and the curb appeal project. So here's the thing. We got all of the gopher mesh laid down and we are currently having a little bit of difficulty finding the right size boulders. Everybody's got these gigantic boulders and I just really need one foot plus or minus. So we caught a little stuck. I can't do anything to the left of the avocado until I get some boulders, um, which will happen on Monday. But in the meantime, we took it as far as we could. I'm really, really happy. Hannah worked meticulously on this dry stream, adding some um, pebbles called Sonora shiners. These have got a lot of orange and look at that. I mean, they can see them, but no, they're just so, Hannah doesn't want me moving her preciously placed well, boulder, her little. You just don't want me moving your, your precious, <laughs> your precious rocks, but I get it. So anywho, yeah, we spring, she sprinkled in some Sonora shiners. So the dry stream is, is just gorgeous. Another, another takeaway is this granite. We are so bougie and snobby in that we always walk right by this rock, this, this ugly gray quartzy stuff. Um, but isn't that gorgeous in that dry stream amongst the purple river rock, which we harvested from this property. Um, and just, you know, that we have honey quartz boulder, we have Baja Cresta boulder, we have river rock boulder. Out of sheer and, un, un, you know, unprecedented desperation, we basically are just taking whatever we can find. We have Palm Springs, but I'm loving it. It adds so much visual interest to the installation. At Waterwise, we got three gorgeous little mammillaria cactus. Because this little front section here, sidewalk side, you know, it's challenging. I don't want to plant anything that's going to grow tall. You know, I could have done some little baby barrels, but I don't know. I just want, hoped that I could do something just a little more interesting. So check this one out. Oh, so cute. Uh, and then we've got this little twofer right here, mammillaria. Yeah, they look like boobies. So cute. So that's just bringing a lot of interest. This Cameronii, I brought that from home. Um, it's just a cutting. It's been in actually underneath my raised little raised um, tapestry bed in the backyard for I don't even know. Um, so I brought it. I made it look like it's in the. Oh yeah. Hannah planted it in the stream bed. There's some pebbles going around it. And then at the mouth up here of the stream, we planted some of the, the client's crassula, or I'm sorry, aloe arborescence and some of the cotyledon pig ears. Those were runamucky in this garden at the beginning. And we cut them all up to use for parts. I brought this really cool little Mr. Toothy from home. This is a, a hybrid aloe that will grow on a trunk and throw off multiple heads in time. So I think this is the perfect plant for right behind. It's you, very thrilling. What are you hoping to do with the dry stacking? Oh yes, and then up here in this hot mess of a corner right here, um, hoping to bring in some one foot minus rubble, six to 12 inch, do a little dry stack so that I can make my own little raised bed and put something in here that will be elevated and you know and then it'll just really you'll see it'll look really natural with the mounding and the and the in the rock and whatnot so our top dressing rock on this project is going to be burgundy lava three quarter inch oh i might have mentioned that already i think i did but that'll happen on monday greg has started on the irrigation today too so monday is is a big day um i am doing you know little finish worky things uh I found these little Graptocetum ghosties in a pot up by the front door and the client said I could use, you know, whatever I could find. 
you know, and I hadn't planned on doing anything too soft in this install because this area down here isn't going to get any irrigation. But since the client is willing to do a little hand watering and these are as tough as nails, I thought this would be a really cute little place to pop in some cuttings of these ghosties. And I want you to see how it really is the little things that make the biggest impact at the end of the day. I have, you know, a, a budget on this job. Um, it's, it's been challenging, but we're rocking it. That's adorable. I love that. So, you know, also against the fence, we, you know, I don't, don't be tempted to plant things like little soldiers in a row. You know, I know that we, we want to take the eye, draw the eye away from the chain link, but we can do that successfully by just planning out groupings. Give the eye somewhere to rest besides against the fence. You see, if you just plant little soldiers all along the fence line, what's going to happen to the eye? I'll give you a minute. Right, your eye's going to be drawn to the fence. This way, because we've staggered and we've pulled away from it, the eye is drawn away from the fence. So there's another little design tip for you. I brought this um, Alostriata from home. Um, I think it's going to do really well right here. Greg is starting to install, you can see here, the Netafim drip. We're doing it right on top of the gopher mesh and then we'll cover it with soil like so. And then it'll also get covered with rock so it won't show. Um, you guys are so funny. Uh, the little, you know, B-roll video that I posted of me throwing the planting cans into the dumpster and them falling on me. Um, you were all so concerned. Oh my gosh, why are you throwing those away? Don't throw them away. Well, um, little story, here in California a few years ago, the Department of Agriculture said no more recycling of black planting cans because of soil-borne pathogens. We started having a lot of issue with pathogens just blowing through California. We had sod, uh, sudden oak death, which was a soil-borne pathogen, just knocked out our oaks and our mountains. So we, to contain that, Unfortunately, the planting cans have to be destroyed. We can't take them back to the nursery. We, we used to recycle every can. Now we can't. So that's, that's the deal here in California, so you know. Although we are saving a lot. Yeah, the client is actually going to keep all of the cans from uh, this job that I didn't throw away, and she's gonna bleach them and then put them on the curb for plant groups or for her neighbors or for her own personal use. So that's fine. If you've got that kind of time and inclination, you can do that. So what else? I don't think there's anything else I can say. Curb appeal. curb appeal. Yes. Be sure and tune in on Monday. Hannah's going to post some befores of this yard um, and you're going to be absolutely blown away and this you know just goes to show you what a little ingenuity and a little creativity can do you know the money here really is just in the the large barrel cactus and this 15 gallon pilosoceros every other plant here is just really common and, and pretty ordinary and absolutely could have been uh, saved up through collection of cuttings um, you can do it is what i'm saying so thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting my channel through, through joining. And uh, thanks for, uh, for tuning in and for liking this video. Everybody have a fantastic afternoon and a wonderful tomorrow. And we will see you on Monday. It's been Laura of Design for Serenity reporting for Team DFS and Poway with day four and your succulent tip of the day. Thanks, guys.